Hello, welcome to PC Jack. Today, we're going to run over some things that you should do if your newly built system is not booting up. But most importantly, don't panic. So, we've all been there, you finally got all the parts for your new PC and you spend hours putting it all together and then you go to press the power button and nothing happens. The panic to figure out what is wrong can be really frustrating and uh, is still an issue for even seasoned PC builders as well as newcomers. So today I'm going to run through my steps for troubleshooting a system that either won't power on or won't boot and hopefully one of these steps may be able to help you out. It's worth noting there may be a rather unique reason why your system may not be booting but these steps are generally the, uh, the most common fixes for a system that won't boot. Number one, check all your connectors internally and externally. When you go to press the power button and nothing happens, the uh, usual suspect to this is that something has been plugged in incorrectly or in the wrong place. The biggest culprit for this are the cases from panel connectors. On my first build, I actually had the power and reset switches in the wrong orientation on the front panel header, which meant that my system would not power on at all. But once I figured that out and swapped them over, it powered up instantly. Always make sure to refer to your motherboard manual to uh, find the, uh, the exact layout for your front panel connectors, but generally they are the same across the board for most motherboards. Besides the front panel connectors, make sure your CPU power, 24 pin motherboard power and also your PCIe power are all connected and fully seated. Also, make sure that your PSU is plugged in, which actually brings me to number two on our list. Number two, make sure your PSU is powered on. I've lost count of the amount of times that I've gone to turn a system on and nothing has happened because I haven't flipped the switch on the power supply. It's an easy mistake to make, but uh, just double check that you have flipped that switch to on on the PSU. And number three, check your RAM. RAM is also a uh, very common suspect when it comes to a system not working correctly on first boot. You may find that your system will begin booting but will become stuck in a boot loop or just won't uh, power on whatsoever. If you have a debug LED, it may show CPU or DRAM to be at fault for here. This is most usually an issue with the memory, so what I like to do is to uh, take a stick out and try each one individually, perhaps in uh, a number of different slots, and see whether that fixes the issue. If your system posts with one stick of memory, then it may mean that one of your sticks is actually defective and you'll have to return it. Now, depending on your CPU, it can be a little finicky with which memory kits it will actually support. Your best way to clarify this is to check your motherboard's QVL list for uh, better compatibility. Number four, make sure your GPU is fully seated. Sometimes it can be quite easy to not actually uh, fully seat the GPU when you install it in the PCIe slot. So when installing your GPU, make sure you hear that click as it actually slots into the slot. Your GPU fans will usually spin up on boot and then uh, they will turn off in desktop if you have zero decibel fans. But you may find that your fans will spin at full speed and not stop, which could be an indication that it's not fully seated, so make sure to keep an eye out for that. Number six, check your debug LEDs or postcodes. Now, not all motherboards will have this feature, but it can be extremely useful when trying to narrow down what is causing your issues with your PC not booting. You will typically have a CPU, DRAM, VGA and post LED. And what your system will do, it will cycle through these until it actually reaches the post screen to ensure that everything is working correctly. If you get stuck on a particular LED, then that can indicate there is an issue that you need to fix. Some higher end motherboards will actually have postcode readouts, which will actually give you a code which you can look up to see what is actually wrong with your system. Number seven, check your BIOS compatibility with your CPU. Now, this has been quite a recurring issue for AMD over the last few years with their AM4 socket, but it can also affect Intel users as well. Depending on what motherboard you have and what CPU you have, you may have to flash the BIOS to actually support the processor. For example, if you have a B550 motherboard and a new Ryzen 5000 series CPU, there is potential, depending on how long the retailer has had a hold of that motherboard, that it won't have compatibility out of the box for your new Ryzen 5000 CPU. A simple way to fix this is using what's called BIOS Flashback, which actually enables you to update the BIOS without having a CPU installed. Simply download the latest BIOS and save it to a FAT32 USB drive. Ensure to save it in the root of the drive and not in a folder. So 
so that it's easier to locate. Plug the USB drive into the rear of your motherboard and you will have a BIOS flashback button, which typically you'll have to hold down until it starts to flash and the flashing will indicate that the update is in progress. Do not do anything else while this is going on as there is a potential for bricking your motherboard if a BIOS update goes wrong. So let it do its thing and once the flashing stops that typically means that the BIOS flash is complete and then you can try and boot up and see if you've been successful or not. You can often do this without most of your components installed, the very least being your power supply to provide power to your motherboard. But it's worth checking your motherboard's manual just to check for the exact steps that they recommend for your motherboard. However, if your board does not support BIOS flashback, the only way you'll be able to flash your BIOS to support your new CPU is to drop in an older CPU and then flash your BIOS, which is a bit awkward if you don't have a compatible CPU lying around. To avoid this, look out for a sticker on the box. For a B550 board, it may say Ryzen 5000 series ready on a sticker on the box, letting you know that you'll have full compatibility without having to flash your BIOS. And finally, at number eight, this may not be the most practical solution for newcomers, but for anyone else, it can be helpful to just swap out parts if you have other parts lying around. Now, this method is a little impractical for newcomers building their first system, as you most likely do not have spares to actually put into your new build, but it can be helpful to swap parts in and out to see if you have received any defective components. And once you've figured out which part is defective, you can then return it and then put it in your system. A real life example of this that I had recently was I was putting the system together and it would not post whatsoever. I was receiving a CPU or DRAM LED debug. And so what I did, I took out the kit of memory that was in there and replaced it with a kit of memory from my spare system and then it booted up straight away, obviously meaning that I would received a defective kit of memory. Like I said, not the most practical solution for everyone, but it's still something that's worth trying if you can. So, those are my troubleshooting steps for a system that won't boot. If you're having issues with your new build and one of these tips helped you out, then uh, please let me know in the comments. If you are still stuck and can't actually finish your build, please let me know as I'd love to be able to help. If you found this video useful, then please feel free to like and subscribe for more videos on the way soon. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.